Hello everyone, Mr. Kaczynski with you. We are in section S of IXL's Algebra 1 skills, still doing some slope-intercept form stuff. Today we're going to write equations given a table. Remember that slope-intercept form is any equation in the form y equals mx plus b, where m represents the slope, the constant rate of change, rise over run, change in y over change in x, whatever you want to call it, we call it slope. And b is the y-intercept, so the value of y or the value of our function when x equals zero. <clears throat> so here's a table, uh, and we're supposed to fill in these missing values, where this one in front of the x would be slope, and this would be the y-intercept here. So let's start with slope. Oops. How about what happens here? It says f of x, <clears throat> but that's basically our y-value. That's a constant increase of one. All right, <clears throat> meanwhile, x is also going up by 1. And even if you look at it like, well, 1 over 1 is 1, all right? And even if you look at it as, you know, it goes up from 1 to 4, that's an increase of 3. Well, from 5 to 8 is an increase of 3, and 3 over 3 is still 1. So that's our y-intercept or I'm sorry, our slope. Now our y-intercept could just be obtained by uh, using the equation y equals mx plus b. So let's do alright, now that we have slope we can plug that in for m. I'm going to take this point right here where x is 5 and y is 1, and we're going to be able to figure out b from this. Alright, so we will just multiply. 1 times 5 is 5. And then we'll subtract 5 from both sides. And we get negative 4 is equal to b. So, negative 4. IXL already put the negative sign in there for us. So negative 4. Y, uh, f of x equals 1x minus 4. Let's do this again. All right, first I do this. My change there is 3. And notice it's a constant rate of change of 3. Here's a change of 1. And again, x is going up by 1 every time. So slope would be 3 over 1, which is 3. And that goes right there. As far as our y-intercept, let's use our equation, okay? And we'll use a point, too. So I'm going to say y, 6, equals m, which we just figured out is 3, times x, there it is, 2, plus b. And I'll multiply. 3 times 2 is 6. And then I'll subtract 6 from both sides. 6 minus 6 is 0, so our b value is 0. So normally, if I were writing this equation, I would just leave this as f of x equals 3x. I wouldn't include the plus 0. Just like on the previous one, I would just leave this as f of x equals x minus 4. I wouldn't bother with the 1. All right, let's do it again. y values are going up by 3 as our x values go up by 1. So m equals 3 over 1, which is just 3. As far as our y-intercept, you know, I'm not going to use the equation this time. How about we just go backwards 1? Then wouldn't our y value, or our output, go backwards 3? That would leave us at 0, negative 3. So we could write our equation as y equals our slope, 3, times x, plus our y-intercept. And our y-intercept is negative 3. All right, so we don't always need to you know, plug all the values into an equation. When we're looking at a table, maybe we can easily identify what the y-intercept is. It gets a little tougher as your x values get further away from 0, though. All right, what's our constant rate of change here? Looks like our outputs are going up by... 17, 
every time our x values go up by 1. So our slope is 17 over 1, which is just 17. So our y-intercept, what happens if we go backwards 1 from 2 to 1? Going backwards, well then we would need to go backwards 17, which would put us at negative 14. And if we go backwards another 1, we'll be at 0. And our y-intercept will be negative 31. Now we could also do this algebraically. That's called numerically. We could do um, use this point here. 3 equals our slope times our x value plus b. y equals mx plus b. Then we can multiply 17 times 2 is 34. And then we could subtract 2 from both sides. And we would get b equals 3 minus 31 which is, oh sorry, 3 minus 34, which is negative 31. And when we subtract 34 from both sides of the equation, that's the same thing as when we subtracted 17 twice to go backwards um, to get to the y-intercept here. But either way, numerically or algebraically, we've got our equation now. It's y equals 17 times x minus 31 for our y-intercept. Let's do one more. All right. Looks like an increase of three repeatedly for our outputs, uh, an increase of one repeatedly for our inputs. Unfortunately, you know, why IXL just chose a bunch that the X value is always going up by one. They could have changed that for us, made it a little bit tougher to figure out slope. But the slope is three. All right, I'm just going to do this algebraically. I'm going to do y equals mx plus b. I'm going to use that point. 75 equals 3 times 4. That's y equals mx plus our b, our y-intercept. We'll multiply. 3 times 4 is 12. And we'll subtract 12, meaning we have to go backwards 4 or 3 4 times. Uh, to get to our y-intercept if we look at it in the table. So subtract 12 from both sides, that leaves us at 63 for our y-intercept. So our equation is going to be y equals our slope, 3, times x, plus our y-intercept, which is 63. y equals 3x plus 63. So find slope, find y-intercept, and you got your equation. Good luck writing equations from a table. Let me know how it goes in the comments.